Well, everyone, the Samsung Galaxy Note lineup is one of those lineups that Samsung kind of terminated, but it looks like it's going to be coming back with the S22 Ultra. Now, here's the thing about the Galaxy Note 8 that came out many years ago. In my opinion, this was one of the differentiating factors from the older Note lineup and the successors, you know, the Note 9, the Note 10s, the Note 20 Ultras. The Samsung Galaxy Note 8 was, I think, one of the most important Note phones that, that Samsung's ever made, and that's a really important thing to keep in mind. With every successor to the Note 8, I mean, it's pretty much looked like the Note 8 in some form or fashion. Even with the Note 20 Ultra, I still get some resemblance of the Note 8. Now, I probably wouldn't recommend picking up this phone anymore, but I will recommend the Note 20 Ultra, the S21 Ultra, the S22 Ultra when that comes out. So links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now, here's the crazy thing. If you guys remember, the, the predecessor of this phone, which was the Note 7, that device actually, you know, had its whole little history and it got discontinued and all that crazy stuff. But the Note 8, I think Samsung did a great job. You know, they had to go ahead and kind of change it up a little bit. And I think from the Note 7 to the Note 8, it was a pretty big difference in my opinion. Now on the outside, on the front, you have a pretty big 6.3 inch Super AMOLED display. It's 1440p and it's a pretty big phone and it still feels really good as well. It's funny because the latest, you know, Samsung's all have like 6.1 inch or 6.2 inch panels, but this one at that time was one of the bigger Samsung phones you know, Samsung made. You have a little bit of bezel on the top and bottom, but even in this day and age, it really isn't that bad when you consider you know the iPhone 10's notch from 2017 is still around on the iPhones so this one really isn't that outdated you do have the hole punch displays on the latest phones but you know this one still looks pretty good you have curved panel 2 which looks and feels really really good as well and I'm a huge fan of that you have a USB type C port on the bottom headphone jack and a micro SD card slot which is amazing like I mentioned for so long now having that type of IO on these types of devices makes these phones feel and last so much longer than you would expect and that is one of my favorite things about owning some of these phones is because they still feel and look so beautiful so many years later now we also have the S Pen on this phone as as well which is pretty much like the stylus i think everyone knows it by now but it's still one of my coolest features of the samsung phones and i'm thinking the s22 ultra may actually have one built in i'm not too sure but i know the s21 ultra actually had s pen capability too which was really cool and on the back we have the glass back on this phone which still looks really good feels really good as well you have wireless charging which is really really beautiful you have that dual camera setup up top my IP certification, the whole nine yards. I mean, this phone still feels like a really good phone. It still looks like a very good phone as well. Unfortunately, there are some weirder aspects of it, which I'll get into in a second, but let's go and hit on the camera for the time being. This phone, like I mentioned, had that dual camera setup on the back and had a 12 megapixel wide angle lens and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens, but it also had a, I guess a dual camera setup on the front. It was an eight megapixel wide angle lens, then a two megapixel iris scanner, which really didn't like come in handy with the camera. Now, this is what I'll tell you about the camera quality. It's actually very interesting because even in my opinion, I think this phone's camera is still pretty relevant. I think it's still pretty decent. I guess the only downside is that the back can only shoot 4K at 30 or rather than 4K at 60 that we have nowadays. The front can do 1440p, but again, no 4K on the front either. And that was kind of a disadvantage for a lot of 2017 phones, even some 2018 phones. There was still no 4K on the front until like 2019. But I will tell you the Samsung Galaxy Note 8's camera, for it having what it has, things like, you know, all the features within the camera app and all those other crazy things. I mean, this camera quality, I still think is pretty good. I don't think it's perfect and I do think there's a lot of issues within it. But I do think if you need a phone to kind of like, you know, go through the rest of your day with and, you know, take photos and videos, this thing is actually pretty decent. Now, the downside of some phones like the Note 8, a lot of these Android applications like TikTok and, you know, Instagram, they don't utilize the full Android experience for these cameras, which is very weird. It seems like they just take a screenshot of the camera rather than actually taking photos and videos from the camera. So it can be a little laggy and a little glitchy here and there, but I still think something like the Samsung Galaxy Note 8's camera is pretty good and, you know, it wouldn't be the reason why I would pick this phone up, but I think it's a decent camera. It was really good when it first came out, and I think it's pretty okay, you know, in 2022 when you consider the price and the age and everything like that. So, in terms of that, that covers it up there. Now, hitting on the software longevity, this is obviously the one area of this phone where it's really not going to be lasting much longer. The Samsung Galaxy Note 8 is pretty much outdated as it is. It stopped getting software support at One UI 1, which was on Android 9, and that's a given. You know, this phone is pretty much not really worth it anymore because of the software even though the hardware of this phone still feels fine even though it's still kind of heavy in terms of the performance side of things it just doesn't make 
any sense to pick up this phone because it's just so outdated. I mean, we're on Android 12 now and we're already getting leaks about Android 13 and this thing stopped getting software support a couple of years ago. So because of that, it just makes less and less sense to purchase something like the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. And that's kind of unfortunate because it's still such a beautiful phone, but it just doesn't make any sense at all to buy it. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up there. Now hitting on the performance side of things, this device has that Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 chipset inside of it with a couple of different models, but each model had six gigabytes of RAM. But you also had the micro SD card slot, so it didn't really make much sense to buy the top tier models unless you wanted to, you know, get more internal storage. Now the thing about the performance is is that I'm sure back in 2017 when this phone first came out, I remember hearing a lot of reviews about it and people talking about it and people love this phone, you know, just like every other Samsung device. Samsung puts everything they have, you know, inside of these phones at that moment. They've kind of slowed down a little bit now, but at this moment, I mean, they just kind of, whatever they had, they just threw it in a phone. And it was a really good phone in my opinion. And even now, I can still see the resemblance of a lot of the speed coming out. But the thing is, is that because this software is outdated, it's kind of like a double sword on one hand you know it doesn't have many features or anything but on the other hand it hasn't really slowed down too much so i still feel like i'm using like a clunky older piece of software but it still feels pretty fast which is so weird compared to the newer phones now i think the smoothness factor with something like you know the 120 hertz displays we have nowadays just kind of take a toll on the note 8 because it doesn't have it but i think for day-to-day -day tasks dude honestly i think it would be okay but again it wouldn't be my first choice and the other thing to keep in mind is that maybe in the next few years android is not going to be supported with a lot of these applications that are going to be coming out. So even if this thing could have handled every single application you threw at it, native support may not be coming out. For example, I you know tried to use Genshin Impact on this phone and that didn't even work out that well, which was weird. I had to like go through like a huge workaround, which is so annoying. So again, big thing to keep in mind. I don't think it's a deal breaker, but I mean, the software is the one thing that's really even affecting the performance here, which is so crazy to think about. So in terms of that, that covers it up there. Now ending it off with the battery life, this device had a 3,300 milliampere battery, which I'm sure at that time was a pretty big size battery, but now that's actually pretty small. You know, that's actually like a pretty basic size battery to have on a phone nowadays. So it's funny that Samsung put it on this type of device. Again, totally understandable. You know, this was a time where probably like 2,500 million hours was a massive size battery at that point. So 3,300, I'm sure is, you know, was a big, you know, battery size at that point. But as of right now, it's really not that big. And that pretty much covers it up there. It's not really that good battery life of a phone anymore, to be honest. So in terms of that, that covers it up there. And to be completely honest, I think the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, if you couldn't tell, is pretty much not worth it in 2022 anymore. I think this phone is pretty outdated when it comes down to it in terms of the internals. But the externals, you know, everything with the body, the display, even the camera, like they're really not that bad but it just doesn't make any sense to buy it when you're already getting a phone that is already outdated if you pick up this phone you may want to go and upgrade probably like the next couple of months unless you're using this phone as like a side device where you're not using it as your main phone then maybe that would be a kind of a decent idea but even that doesn't make too much sense to me and it would just make way more sense to buy something like the samsung galaxy note 10 the galaxy s10 the you know note 20s the Pixel 6, the Pixel 5, the Pixel 4, like these types of devices make so much more sense to buy. And even the Pixel 4, I wouldn't recommend, but you probably want to get a phone that's still kind of supported with software. So in terms of that, that covers it up there. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.